Hello again, I'm Summer Lee and welcome back to Fashion Show and Tell. In part one of this episode we looked at warp patterned and warp printed textiles in 18th and 19th century European and American fashion. Uh, you can go back and watch that video now if you haven't already and now we're looking at it in the 20th and 21st centuries. So just like in part one, I'm going to start us out with a book of fabric swatches. The Victorian Albert Museum has this book circa 1903 or 1904. It's French and it contains samples of warp printed silk taffetas which have that characteristic blur in the vertical direction. And I think this is a really ideal way to compare and examine the evolution of European aesthetic ideologies between the Chine à la branche of the 17th 1960s and the warp pattern designs of the early 1900s. Now the first dress we're looking at starts us right in the beginning of the 20th century. It dates to between 1900 and 1909, so right in that pocket of time that transitions between the Victorian and Edwardian eras. This is at the Goldstein Museum of Design by an unknown American designer, although the tag says Landa Minneapolis. There is a lot going on with this dress between the lace and the ribbons and this fabric is different from what we've seen previously because not only is it warp printed but it's also jacquard woven. The jacquard loom was invented in the early 1800s and that's the weaving technique used to create these woven floral motifs that have that different texture with the white and yellowish threads. Whereas of course the pinks, greens, and yellows were warp printed and uh, to me, they really have that sort of watercolor paint look to them due to that blur. Moving along just a few years, we're looking at a wedding dress at the Museum at the Fashion Institute of Technology. It's listed as being circa 1912 and made by uh, Shogren. I had never heard of Shogren before, and this led me down a little bit of a research rabbit hole. It's possible that this means M and A Shogren, a dressmaking business from around the same time founded by sisters May and Anne Shogren in Portland, Oregon. And they did in fact make wedding dresses that would have sold for uh, what today would have been several thousands of dollars. Unfortunately, these images are not available in high resolution, so we can't have a super close look at the textile. But uh, what we know from the description is that it is a champagne silk jacquard, like the previous dress, with metallic yarns, and it depicts an exaggerated ecot pattern. And um, I did discuss ecot in part one if you uh, want a little background on that. Next is our first pair of shoes, which are from the Chertsey Museum in the UK. They're dated to 1925 to 1927 and seem very inspired by the 18th century. According to the museum, they are made from multicolored warp printed silk bound with ribbed silk ribbon and lined with white kid leather and cotton. And they feature metal buckles with clear paste stones, also 18th century inspired. And the museum speculates that, quote, it is possible that they were originally made to match a gown of the same fabric, end quote. So while I sadly was not able to find a great example of a warp printed 1920s dress in a museum collection, in my internet searches, I found two images posted on social media from Vogue that include illustrations of warp printed 20s dresses. So that said, I did find one dress from the 1930s. Uh, this is a circa 1932 French evening dress at the Victoria and Albert Museum with warp printed hydrangeas. I just want to see this dress on the shape of a body so badly and I also feel like the hydrangeas are begging to be colorful instead of black and white. But um, if you would like to defend this dress in the comments, please be my guest. Next we have some interesting pieces from the Philadelphia Museum. Museum of Art, a dress and a pair of gloves that seem to match. The dress is from 1958, designed by Italian designer Emilio Schuberth, made with dark green silk taffeta and ivory silk taffeta, um, warp printed with purple and yellow flowers. And we know the name of the woman who wore and donated this dress. And the same woman also donated this pair of gloves dated to 
1958, though the designer is listed as unknown. But to me, this looks like the exact same fabric. If anything, maybe it's just a bit more faded, but I have to imagine that they were worn together, especially since they came from the same place. These next two objects also look like they could have gone perfectly with that ensemble, um, but they are actually not associated in any way. Uh, the museum at FIT has this circa 1955 to 1959 Christian Dior evening set consisting of a handbag and a pair of shoes. And as we can see, the main fabric is a warp printed silk with blue flowers and purple roses. And side note, just something personal about me, uh, I love purple roses. They have a very deep um, emotional significance. So I am all for all of these purple roses. <laughs> Okay, next we're looking at a dress by Cristobal Balenciaga, circa 1958, and this is at the Decorative Arts Museum in Berlin, Germany. Uh, I'm really happy to include this piece because it gives us a short break from looking at so many florals. Instead, we have these warp printed pink polka dots on silk taffeta that were designed and made specifically for this dress in Lyon, France, which is incredibly famous for its silk weaving. But I have to admit that even though these are not flowers, I love that when you really zoom in on the polka dots, the blurred effect makes them almost look like individual rose petals. Moving on to the next object, this is a ball gown from the Indianapolis Museum of Art. It was designed by Norman Norell for his label with Anthony Trena, and it also dates to um, 1958. The silhouette of this dress is so graceful and feminine with the full skirt and the big bow and especially combined with this fabric which looks to be warp printed uh, with beautiful red tulips. And I love that we can really zoom in and see the effect of the warp printing giving that blurry uh, painted look. And here we have another Norell, but now this was made in 1961 for his independent label. This ensemble is at the Museum of the City of New York, and it consists of a sequin blouse, a warp printed skirt and stole, and an orange waist sash. Um, the cut of the skirt is pretty similar to the previous. It's ankle length with lots and lots of pleats, which goes to show that 1950s styles did not go out of fashion as soon as the calendar turned over into the 60s. And here we can get a really great view of the warp printed fabric, which depicts geraniums and peonies in shades of green and orange and red and pink. What we have next is super interesting. So this is an Australian evening dress and matching gloves from the same year, circa 1961, at the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences. As we can see, the dress is strapless and boned with a knee length bubble skirt and also very long opera length gloves. And what is so interesting to me about this is that it's described as imitation warp printed silk taffeta. So that means that the fabric was printed after it was woven, but printed to have the vertical blur effect to look warp printed, possibly because actual warp printing was more complicated and expensive. And there is such a long history of fabrics made to imitate more expensive fabrics. This dates back to ancient times. And closing out the modern fashion era, we have one more evening dress by Cristobal Balenciaga from spring summer 1961. And I found this dress at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston as well as the museum at FIT. The silhouette of the dress is described as slightly dropped and gathered waistband curving up in back to gathered Watteau back. And Watteau back meaning that it is referencing the robe la Francaise of the 18th century. And the fabric is yellow and green, warp printed with large fruits and or flowers. Um, it's described as a pomegranate grape pattern, although it's so abstract, it's kind of hard to make out. Okay, so postmodernism and beyond is my way of saying uh, fashion created after the 1960s or the late 1960s because we see occasion dressing and dress etiquette really turned on its head or even completely thrown away. And we're getting garments that can be totally different in nature from what we saw previously. And then we get into post-postmodernism, but I 
don't want things to get confusing. So what I'm showing you first is a jacket and skirt designed by Willie Smith in the Black Fashion Museum collection at the Smithsonian. And the date range given is really wide. It's dated to between 1969 and 1987. Uh, I'm curious as to why they weren't able to narrow that down. So anyway, as you can see, uh, these pieces appear to have an ECOT warp patterning technique going on, although the museum actually describes it as a colorful brushstroke ecot print. Now we're going to quickly look at three 1980s ensembles by Issei Miyake. And the reason I say quickly is just because uh, the image resolution on all of these is really quite low, possibly due to copyright issues. So it's pretty hard to see what's really going on. The first two are from the Kent State University Museum and feature ecot designs in the tops. And the third is from the Denver Museum of Art. So the museum calls this ensemble a jacket with transformable bustle and asymmetric skirt from autumn winter 1986, 1987, and they call the textile ecot printed cotton and silk. And next are quite a few pieces designed by Oscar de la Renta in the late 1990s and early 2000s, including uh, this spring 2005 coat, which is also at the Fine Arts Museum of San Francisco, and this ecot patterned gown from the fall 2013 collection. So clearly Oscar de la Renta took a lot of inspiration from ecot. Also, if you happen to watch the 2014 documentary Dior and I, you might recognize that in Raph Simmons' first collection for Dior, which was autumn winter 2012, he collaborated on custom warp printed textiles inspired by Dior's work in the 1950s, but with a contemporary twist. So this very striking green dress from the collection was at the Christian Dior Designer of Dreams exhibition, which actually is coming to the Brooklyn Museum this year. So I hope I will actually get to see it in person soon. And finally, I'm going to close us out with a sari at the Victorian Albert Museum made in 2013. The textile was designed by Niru Kumar, an Indian textile designer who is considered a pioneer and revolutionary in the field. And what's different about this textile is that while it is ecot, it's actually weft patterned instead of warp patterned because in fact ecot can refer to either technique. Okay, so that is it for our look at warp patterned fashion in museum collections. Between part one and part two, I believe we looked at uh, 38 different objects and I had a lot of fun finding them for you. If you have suggestions for themes or uh, topics for future episodes, I would really love to hear from you in the comments. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like this content and I'll see you next time.